There's nothing quite as torturous as the long wait for a new season to get underway. And a few weeks without Rangers means withdrawal symptoms such as obsessing over training videos or poring over every detail of the career of some guy we've never heard of just because his name was linked in any way with Rangers. Pre-season friendlies do scratch the itch a little and can give us a glimpse into how the team might shape up, but in reality they rarely tell us much about how a team will perform over the course of the season. Despite only being the first of 38 league games to come, the return of the real stuff on opening day however can set the tone for what we'll see through the season, good or bad. And in many ways looking back through Rangers recent first game history, the roller coaster journey we've been on over the last 15 or so years plays out in our start of season results. Remember I said that when this video gets a little brutal around the middle. You're watching Top 10 Rangers and this is 10 times Rangers set the tone on opening day. Before I begin, a brief reminder that if you want to follow this channel's reaction to every result from the first league game on, head on over to Patreon where you'll find a detailed player ratings video for every domestic match Rangers play this season. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and let's go. It seems hard to imagine given how quickly it all fell apart but the level of excitement felt among fans leading up to Paul Le Guin's French Revolution ahead of the 2006-2007 season can only be described as electric. Touted as one of the hottest young coaches in Europe at the time, fans spent all summer itching to see the fluid football of Le Guin's all-conquering Lyon side at Rangers that would put us light years ahead of the rest of Scottish football. The first taste of league action under the new coach would come away to Motherwell and the football on display at Far Park did nothing to quell the buzz. Rangers were sensational. New boys Lee Borsianko and Jeremy Clement appeared ready to take Scotland by storm. The former somewhat fortuitously opening the scoring after a fine pass by a young Charlie Adam who had also been handed the opportunity to impress. And Thomas Buffel deployed in his natural number 10 role looked like the player we'd hoped we had signed 18 months earlier and but for some poor finishing, could easily have had a hat-trick such was the relentless attack. Whilst early indications of the forward-thinking intent of Le Guin's side was on full display, the defensive Achilles heel was also exposed early. A simple ball into the box found Phil O'Donnell completely free in the six-yard box with enough time to force a save and tap in the rebound without a defender in sight. A Dado Purso header from a corner was enough for a 2 1 win going on 7, but the defensive frailty would continue over Le Guin's spell and charge and see the swaggering confidence of the opening day dissipate. On the day though, it felt like the start of a glorious new chapter, and the thought that Le Guin's reign would end after the same fixture just months later didn't seem possible. After the dramatic failure and subsequent fallout of Le Guin's time in charge, it fell to Rangers legend Walter Smith to steady the ship. After finishing the season strongly and returning harmony to the club, Smith set about building a side suited to the Scottish game. Gone were the Carl Svensons and Mactar and Dyes, and in came the likes of Lee McCulloch, Carlos Queller, and Kurt Broadfoot. The new season would get underway for Rangers with a notoriously difficult trip to the Highlands to face Inverness. A difficult trip that was made to look easy, as Smith's side remained solid in keeping a clean sheet and ran out 3-0 winners thanks to two stunners from Barry Ferguson, sandwiched by a cracking strike from Nacho Novo. That the two scorers were players who had proved their mettle in Scotland, yet were both close to an Ibrox exit under Le Guin told us own story about Walter Smith's understanding of what is required to win in our country, and though the team would ultimately fall short of lifting the title that season in controversial circumstances, the signs of the gaffer returning Rangers to the top of Scottish football were clear to see. The 
though Walter Smith had achieved the difficult task of correcting Rangers course on the pitch to deliver three titles in a row, his successor Ali McCoist inherited a far worse situation in relation to off-field issues. After holding Rangers together throughout the tumultuous 2011-2012 season and following summer that led to Rangers being placed in Scotland's bottom flight, McCoist managed to pull together a side that fans were just happy to see take the field against Brecon in the Ramsden's Cup. The road back through the football wilderness of the lower leagues would begin away to Peterhead. Most fans expected nothing less than a canter through stage one of the journey. And how could it not be with experienced pros like Lee McCulloch, Neil Alexander, Doran Goyan, and Carlos Bocanegra still on the side? And many, including myself, were in some ways excited about the chance to rebuild the club's future. Teenager Barry Mackay's opener was a positive start for this vision. But the reality of where the club were quickly became apparent, as Rangers almost immediately embraced the level of football in Division 3 by playing a basic long ball style. The Peterhead players must have been dreaming, playing live on national TV against the mighty Rangers, and instead of playing like a side in the wrong division, here we were dropping our standards to fit in. Their two goals to turn the game on its head providing a stark dose of reality to fans like me who thought Rangers would only have to turn up each week to win. Andy Little's scrappy late equaliser at least spared us defeat, but the road back to the top suddenly looked a much more treacherous one than it had before kickoff. By the time the journey had reached its third phase, the Scottish Championship, which in the 2014-2015 season appeared to be more of a blockbuster division than even the top flight, as both Hearts and Hibs joined Rangers in the league below. The romance of our situation was long gone, though the real fight that season was the fans' off-field war against the leeches running the club into the ground. The football would return with the mouth-watering prospect of relegated hearts coming to Ibrox. Rangers attempted to rewind to 2009 as Kenny Miller and Chris Boyd started up top. However, instead of Stephen Davis and Pedro Mendes supplying the ammunition from midfield, they would be relying on Ian Black and Nicky Law to pull the strings. Something they proved incapable of as a scrappy game went from end to end without much quality shining through. Hearts captain Danny Wilson, who Rangers fans well know wasn't the most physically commanding centre half, rose unchallenged to give Hearts an early second half lead, and the rest of the game mirrored how the season itself would play out. Rangers would huff and puff with little success in their efforts to catch the Tynecastle side. A moment of hope came in the 90th minute when Nicky Law levelled the game. His gestures afterwards not exactly endearing himself to fans who maybe weren't as satisfied with a draw as the former Motherwell player. Not to worry though, that disconnect wouldn't last long, as Usman Sow put Hearts 2-1 up just seconds after kicking off to inflict Rangers' first opening day defeat since August 1998, when Dick Advocate's side lost by the same score to the same opposition. With the previous season having started badly and tailed off from there, Rangers had to take a second bite at promotion from the Championship in 2015. Preparations for this campaign though were night and day compared to the toxic atmosphere surrounding the club the previous season. Off the pitch, control had finally been wrestled back from the parasites that had been running the horror shows of the previous seasons. And installing Mark Warburton, a manager known for attacking possession-based football, meant that fans could finally look forward to what was happening on the pitch. 
after an outstanding 6-2 victory at Easter Road in the Ramsden's Cup, Ibrox welcomed its new heroes for the opening day of the league campaign against St Mirren. With a tangible feeling in the air that the darkest days were now behind us, two goals from Captain Lee Wallace and a bundled over the line third from Dean Shields after St Mirren had pulled one back made it a solid 3-1 win on opening day that continued the wave of positive momentum that Rangers would ride all the way to promotion being confirmed at the start of April. The manner in which Warburton's side had strolled to promotion and the epic Scottish Cup semi-final win over Celtic provided mitigating circumstances for what was a poor finish to the season, as Rangers failed to win any of the remaining four league games before infamously suffering Cup final defeat to Hibs. Despite taking our foot off the gas, fans still believed we were playing the best football in Scotland and now that we'd got promotion, we were going for 55. We had all bought into the hype. And now that we had added English Premier League tested players like Nico Cranshaw, Clint Hill and Joey Barton, who were all certain to stroll the league up here, fans were buzzing for the club's return to top flight action against Hamilton after the four year odyssey to get back there. That is when reality bit hard. In what would prove to be a microcosm of Warburton's spell and charge in the Premier League, Rangers kept the ball for fun but spurned any opportunities presented. Before poor defending allowed Ali Crawford to bend in the opening goal of the game. Martin Waghorn's placed volley levelled the game just past the hour after an exquisite outside of the foot pass by Harry Forrester. But though dominant with the ball, Rangers couldn't grab a winner. A theme that would occur time and time again as Warburton's philosophy failed to make the step up. What had at one time appeared to be a strength, the manager's failure to adapt would become an obvious weakness. Plan A hadn't worked, and now it was time to find someone with a plan B. Plan B turned out to be far worse than Plan A, as Rangers brought in unheard of Portuguese manager Pedro Caixinha as Warburton's replacement in March. While some thought the new boss was lucky to even see out the season after one of the worst old firm defeats in living memory and throwing away a long-standing home record against Aberdeen to play untested youngsters like teenage centre-back Aidan Wilson. That small number grew massively after Pedro was cringingly filmed arguing with fans from a bush following an unfathomable early European exit in Luxembourg. With the prospect of a season potentially left in tattles before it had even begun with failure to win on opening day, perhaps no manager in our history has faced as much opening day pressure as Pedro by the time Rangers kicked off at Fir Park to get the league season underway. Debutant Graham Dorans got his Rangers career off to a great start with a deflected effort from the edge of the box minutes into the game. And followed up with a composed second half penalty winner after a headed goal for the home side. His two goals proved enough to win a tough first game. And the togetherness between fans and players at full time was a promising sign, but unlike the victory there under Le Guin, the performance was scrappy and the play seemed to lack any real purpose or structure. A defeat and a draw in subsequent fixtures against Hibs and Hearts saw prospect of a title challenge come off the rails by the end of August. The 2018-2019 season brought with it the start of the managerial career of the man who would play perhaps the biggest part in the rebuilding of Rangers, Steven Gerrard. 
while Pedro had set himself up for failure by taking the reins of a team in disarray at the end of a poor season. Gerard studied his new side from afar before taking over in pre-season with time to implement changes and lay the groundwork for the long-term growth of his side. Where his predecessor had failed, Gerard succeeded, making Rangers difficult to beat and guiding Rangers through two Europa League qualifying ties before the first league game of the season. A Scottish baptism of fire trip to Pataudry to face Aberdeen who had twice beaten Rangers to second place since the top flight return. The disgraceful red card of Alfredo Morelos by referee Kevin Clancy after sheer guesswork from his linesman only made a tough ask that much harder. But a James Tavernier penalty and Gerrard's tactical flexibility had Rangers just seconds away from a hugely impressive victory before Bruce Anderson squeezed a stoppage time equaliser past Alan McGregor. The game summed up the season to come under the rookie manager. We were definitely much closer to where we needed to be, just not quite there yet. Too many draws against the stodgy, hard to beat sides had been the undoing of the title challenge of the previous season. So kicking off the league campaign against the epitome of stodgy, hard to beat sides Steve Clark's Kilmarnock, and particularly on the rugby park AstroTurf, was perhaps the worst possible start that the fixture computer could have given Steven Gerrard's side. Rangers had failed to win any of the previous season's four fixtures against Kilmarnock with the games all following a similar pattern. Rangers dominate, take the lead but fail to add a second goal before Kelly score the only chance and this one looked to be no different. Nico Katic's 16th minute header was turned into the path of Scott Arfield who gave Rangers the lead but failure to extend it looked as though it was going to haunt us again as Stephen O'Donnell got round the back post to equalise with 7 minutes remaining. With fans feeling like they were watching a repeat of the same movie, Connor Goldson supplied the twist ending, as he got himself on the end of a James Tavernier corner to spark wild scenes in the Rangers end. Pitch invasions aren't exactly common on the first day of a league campaign, but the clear progress already made under Gerrard, combined with an early indication that we could win tough games without playing well, sent fans into a frenzy, that our long wait for success was finally coming to an end. In the end, this game and the season would prove to be one final false dawn, but the unbearable wait would not go on much longer. Staring straight down the barrel of an unthinkable 10th consecutive title for Celtic, the pressure on the shoulders of the Rangers players and management team heading into the 2020-2021 season might have seen lesser sides buckle before a ball had been kicked. But even with Rangers' absence during the early part of their dominance and the ninth title being awarded on a Zoom call, the reality was that if Rangers weren't at their best from minute one, we could all potentially be waking up each day in a world where Celtic had won the 10. That pressure instead brought the players back with a renewed focus and steely determination that this would be their year. And six months on from the last league fixture, Rangers would once again kick off the campaign with the toughest possible start, Aberdeen away. The at this point still somewhat novel environment of an empty stadium made for a less frantic opening than we're accustomed to in these fixtures. In fact, Rangers have rarely had such a comfortable start at Pataudry, controlling the ball and the game as Aberdeen, without an expectant home crowd demanding that they make a game of it, seemed happy enough just to stay in their shape. It would take a lightning quick back to front move to break the deadlock as Tavernier's direct ball was brilliantly guided off the back of Hadji to Alfredo Morelos, 
who played Ryan Kent in behind for the first of Rangers' 92 league goals that season. The inevitable set-piece onslaught from Aberdeen began in the second half, but in an early indication of how determined the defence would prove to keep clean sheets, Leon Balligan sacrificed himself to take an almighty whack off the post to keep out Scott McKenna, in what would be the only real scare of the game for the organised back line. Andrew Considine's lunging challenge on Scott Arfield drew a straight red to make seeing out the vital early win all the easier. A win that firmly set the tone that would play out over a season that will go down for many as the best they've ever witnessed from a Rangers side. A season that led to the moment we'd been waiting a decade for. As on the following season's opening day, the league flag was raised once more at Ibrox. Well, metaphorically speaking, since Rangers actually chose to wait for a full house at Ibrox to celebrate the achievement with the fans. <laughs>